Next up, we have Solon Brokers from Cornell University. Hi, everyone. Thanks for that, uh, Kate. And I think I'll hopefully build quite nicely on the previous two talks. So there is, in fact, a considerable amount of work that's been going on for the past few years on developing fair machine learning techniques. And what I'll try to talk about today is what problem are these actually solving? Uh, so clearly, you've already heard that standard problem here might be that the models we build are not accurate. Uh, maybe they're sort of haphazardly not accurate. Maybe they just don't do a very good job. And maybe any error is seen as being problematic. Um, but really, what often tends to be the case, and what has been the focus of a lot of the work, is these disparities in the accuracy rates along the lines of things like gender or race. Right? And so maybe that's what we want to attend to. We want to make sure that there's equal accuracy across groups. But what we learn, actually, from the work on uh, on the compass score is that it's not maybe enough to actually focus on accuracy. Maybe you have to go a bit further and focus on the difference in the types of errors that are made when, there, when there's a mistake. Is it a type one error, meaning a false positive, or is it a false negative? And how do those differ by group, especially when the consequences of the, of the errors differ? But then we also might talk about biased training data, as we kind of heard earlier this morning already, um, where the problem here is that it's not just that the accuracy rates might differ, but that the, the evaluation techniques we use don't even tell you that you're going to do badly. We, we're actually, I think, in a situation like this. Oops. Yep. Um, sorry. Uh, well, really, what we're concerned with is unrecognized errors. So not just that the accuracy rate might, diff might differ, but that we have no way of even knowing what the real accuracy rate of these things will be in practice. And similarly, we can imagine a situation where it's not just that there's a bias in the way we collect the data, but that the data actually encodes past discrimination. So let's imagine we want to use machine learning for hiring decisions. We use previous employee performance to figure out who in the future would be a good person to hire. And let's imagine that we're using, let's say, their annual review at the, you know, to kind of train this model. Who gets a high annual review score? Well, let's imagine in this first case that the annual review process is somehow influenced by either conscious prejudice or implicit bias, so that these scores don't reflect the actual performance of employees, but rather the kind of judgment made by humans, which then becomes the training data for these models. And so you can imagine that, again, in a way, this is a problem of unrecognized errors, where the, the machine is going to predict that this person won't perform terribly well, uh, but the reason for that is the score that, that we've trained them on is actually misrepresenting what past people were actually able to do. But let me complicate the story a little bit and imagine a slightly different situation where the workplace that these people might actually uh, spend their days can be hostile, can be very unwelcoming to certain people, can make them feel uh, like not, they're, they're not part of a team or they're not giving them more desirable jobs, such that the actual objective measure of their performance might be a faithful reflection of how they did under those circumstances. But it would be hard to argue that building a model using that data would be fair because in a way it's suggesting that that person is responsible for not performing particularly well. And so what we might want to consider is how do you actually make accurate predictions when the circumstances themselves are unfair? Actually, along the lines, I think, of what Moritz was saying. Um, so this all kind of leads to, I think, a focus on questions about these background conditions, what the, what the status quo is, uh, that really we shouldn't take as something that is not available for us to change, right? So these predictions don't actually consider what we can do about the rest of the environment to make those predictions actually no longer valid, that are actually probably the more desirable point of intervention. And if we begin to think that way, if we begin to say that it's not appropriate to make predictions based on the experience of people working in a hostile work environment, you might also want to ask about the longer term consequences of being subject to unfair disadvantage. So the, the point at which people arrive at some important decision being made by machine learning, they've already been subject to all sorts of injustice such that by just looking at them at that moment in time, it may seem entirely fair to make a, a, a decision about them on that criteria. And the prediction might even be accurate. But it would be, in the, in the, it would be under conditions where you've accepted as a given the kind of cumulative disadvantage and injustice this person has suffered up until that point. And so what I would just want to say is that I think there's a really important problem here that we want to make sure that, yes, we are predicting accurately, uh, but we also want to ask whether these tools and techniques are a, a mechanism to remedy past injustice more broadly. And I think in approaching both these problems, there are dangers. So one certainly is that if we're going to use fair machine learning as a way to rectify historical injustice, there's an implicit sort of 
uh, property here that it can be a kind of mechanism for affirmative action. And to do this under the cloak of something that's sort of broadly called fair machine learning, I think runs some serious risks, especially when it becomes exposed as being something along these lines. And similarly, I think there's a real danger here of, of sort of certifying decision making as being fair when the conditions under which those decisions are being made remain deeply unfair. And that we don't want to use machine learning just as a way to continue the status quo. So thanks very much. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Solon. Uh